Welcome to the Pitchworks Podcast. I'm Scott McTaggart. Over the last 20 years, I've been a sales rep, a marketer, a manager, an executive, a consultant, and an advisor. This show is designed to give you access to my list of contacts so that you can learn more about how to present your ideas at work and succeed in your career. Startups and salespeople, marketers and managers, from the Epicast Network in Pittsburgh, it's the Pitchworks Podcast. And when people, when you sit down and take a survey, your brain goes in survey mode and you start thinking, how, do, how should I answer this question? Not right. like, not what do I think, not what was I thinking last Friday? Or, you know, what was really ticking me off, um, you know, last week and, uh, you know, I'm happy now, so whatever, here's, a, here's, your, here's your answer. Hey everybody, it's Scott, it's Wednesday and it's the Pitchworks Podcast. Thanks as always for tuning in. This week, Vivek comes back from Click It and he brings John Goldschmidt with him. Uh, a lot has happened over there. I think this is a really good episode for people who, they're not sure about how to get to that, that fast growth. You know, there's a lot of different ideas that people have, but it seems like the first one everybody starts off with is, uh, look, I'm going to have one idea, I'm going to take one shot, and it's all or nothing. And that's really not real life. You've got to be a little bit circumspect. You've got to go slow and, and do some customer discovery, even after you've launched, and, and figure out, am I really connecting? So uh, these guys are going to come in, they're going to tell their story. And, and frankly, yeah, just like so many other people, it's not always perfect. It's not always great. You've got to be resilient. The type of CEO that that you want to be is the one that can bounce back. So before we jump into the interview, you know I'm going to ask you for something. How about if you find us on social media, check out our LinkedIn company page and uh, just go ahead and follow us there. Every time a new guest or whatever pops up, you're going to see photos of it. You're going to see a nice little description of what we talked about. I think it makes your life a little bit more convenient. Uh, Let's talk to Vivek. Let's talk to John. Back in the studio... Here down at the Epicast Network, the fine folks from Click It. Now, Vivek, you've been here before, so I've decided not to put you in a direct line of fire. John Goldschmidt, on the other hand, you are brand new. You're the noob to the environment. This was a total surprise. I thought I was going to come in here and just hype it up, but yeah, here I am. Yeah. So um, I brought you guys in largely to talk about what has happened since, right? Uh, Vivek, you and I first met at uh, 2017 Demo Day for Innovation Works, and if you don't mind my saying so, right, a ton has changed since then, and I think a lot of that comes from you learning more about your customer and you learning more about sort of like what's best for your employees and your clients and like what's the, you know, what's the growth path that that fits you. Um, Do me a favor, Catch us up on what we missed since the last time you were in. Yeah, and, and thanks for having us uh, again. It's an honor to be back here. So as you know, we were in the uh, hotel space. Uh, we were growing a business, uh, recurring revenue, uh, single digits percent month on month, had 125 customers, still have many of them across 26 states. And we were thinking about how to build a much bigger business. So we were about 10K MRR, and yeah. we wanted to see you know, what was the path to get to 100K. And if you remember in our previous conversation, you know, we were looking at, was it healthcare? Was it retail? Where would we expand the business? Yeah, you and I got, had a lot of conversations around that same time, trying to sort of like brainstorm how to bust out of that, that, that trend you were on, that single digit trend you were on. So um, you know, it seems like you found it. <laughs> We hopefully, I mean, uh, you know, if we think about the proxy for product market fit at the stages we're at now, we often think about month on month growth. And what we've now found is 46% month on month growth. That's roughly the same revenue levels. And so that is a dramatic difference and spending very little to grow that quickly. Um, And, you know, it's a testament to the whole team, to John. Um, you know, to, to our investors for believing in us during our most difficult time periods. And, and it's an exciting time now. So yeah, um, excited about this new chapter for Click It. Right about the time that you were in here, I think John was brand new to the team or just about to join. I can't remember exactly how that, how that sorted out. So John, you got brought in at that point as BD, as just well, like an all, <laughs> all purpose revenue. What, what was your initial spot in the company. Yeah. um, So the initial charge was basically to take this business that was working, but not, um, you know, not, not really sure how it was going to expand and how it was going to become really big. Um, So I I came in kind of to explore the opportunity within the hotel segment, uh, which is is the business Vivek was talking about. We still have, but also other opportunities with, with our skill set and with the things that we learned through this platform. Right. Um, basically, starting in, in what was that, March or April, 
of 2017, uh, started really diving into the hotel space. We went to some some conferences, talked to some of the biggest you know the biggest names out there, and discovered that it was it was maybe not the best way to use what we were building. Okay. Um, so one of the things I'm, yeah. I'm going to interrupt you right there. Mm-hmm. I love the way you phrased that. Right. It wasn't the best way to use what you were building. So um, I think a lot of us don't necessarily realize that the tools we're building can be used for other things until we're mm-hmm. right on top of it. Mm-hmm. I don't think it's ever a great idea to build something and then look for what you can use it for. Right. But we, but we didn't, if you think about it the other way, we weren't, we didn't like build a piece of technology and like, okay, what can we do with this tech? We actually created, we built a piece of technology, but the more important thing was the concept behind what we were doing, Yeah. which is making communication easy and, and making it simple and fast. And, and so it was really more from a conceptual standpoint, okay, here's what we've built and here's what we've discovered. Yeah. And then looking for different avenues where that, where that, that concept was necessary. You're, you're deep into hotels, right? Mm-hmm. You know that you're not getting the growth you wanted out of hotels. So you start customer discovery in healthcare, right? Uh, I, I'm sure there were a couple others. Um, there, tell me if, if go you, ahead. yeah, uh, there were a couple others, actually healthcare HR, uh, uh, Buzzy probably remembers when we were experimenting with a desktop application. Uh, oh, that's right. Yeah. yeah. So we were in here and, and he probably, you know, used a few four letter words about, you know, what we were. <laughs> Buzzy implementing. has never said anything but lovely <laughs> things about our friends at Click It. Yeah. Except for that one time. <laughs> yeah. That lasted about a month. It was a yeah, month, yeah. that one time that lasted a whole month. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm still counting it as just one. Yeah. But this whole customer discovery beta test, let's see if it works in this environment, right? Mm-hmm. That costs money right? It costs money to start exploring, right? And Vivek, I know you, you know, the numbers backwards and you know, the numbers cold, right? Tell me Mm -hmm. what that felt like when you were doing new market discovery, right? Was that anxiety? Was that fear? Where were you while you were trying to figure out your, your faster growth path? It was a very difficult time. Uh, about a year ago, uh, it was January to March. We had missed payroll for three months. Uh, oh, wow. There, I didn't know that. Sorry. Yeah, it was, uh, we were trying to keep the remaining part of the team together. Uh, we, you know, obviously at that point, you, you're you in the midst of a pivot. Yeah. And you have the overhead of an existing business. So you're burning more than makes sense for kind of where you're at at that time. And you haven't, you have no new customers to show any traction or revenue from what you believe may be a new opportunity. Yeah. And uh, that was, I mean, it was it was the most difficult time. And As a CEO, it's even harder. It's Because extreme. it's easy to take all the blame. It is, you know, and I remember those dark moments for a whole team. Um, we would send a weekly update every Friday about where we were on progress with potential customers, on uh, investors, you know. You know, John, at that point, we, we had many deep discussions on, on what do we do because he was initially hired at a different point in time in the company's life. And uh, you know, he agreed to sort of uh, restructure his arrangement with the company, kind of double down on really believing in, in the opportunity on what we could build here. And yeah, that was, that was the lowest point in the, in the company's history. We had an existing investor who, if he had not bet on us at that time, we probably would have died. Um, right. I mean, we had recurring revenue, but the whole team structure would have fell apart. We hadn't found a new market opportunity where we were going to really expand the business. And, um, you know, today we are growing faster than probably most companies in Pittsburgh are at our level. And There's so no just, question. 46 is a great number. I mean, yeah, that's right. a very, very strong number. But as you focus in on, you pulled through right? Uh, if I may, right? I, I, it's great that you credit the investor that helped you out. And I obviously, this doesn't happen without that investor. But the investor doesn't do it because they're great people, okay? Yeah. Like, they may very well be great people, but that's not the motivation between, you know, yeah. just us girls, right? Um, their motivation is they think that it's actually going to work. So, you had to have some sort of a strategy to kind of keep your wits about you at a time when you are describing it was a dark time. You were, you know, a little anxious, a little bit upset, right? Um, how did you keep your sanity? Like, was there like scream into a pillow, right? You know, like throw things out a window. What was the Vivek way of kind of like making sure that you saw it through? It's a great question. I mean, 
I, I think by nature we're fighters and we, we've gotten to this point, we've learned a lot. And I think a lot of people like to dismiss on, on how much they've really learned. And um, if they really focus on, you know, where there's a market opportunity, where those customers have that pain point, uh, you know, th- there is an element of luck to this too. You've got to have the grit, you've got to be resilient. And we knew we could build something at a smaller scale, but we wanted to really see if we ramped up our talent and we had a little more time and and capital, could we build something a lot bigger? And I think that's what we're starting to do. But I would actually ask the question to John because... Oh, he's going to get his turn. Trust (laughs) me. I got a whole thing planned for Mr. Goldschmidt over here. (laughs) You you know, in my perspective, my job is to keep it together. That's my responsibility. I've invested so much time and money into the company and and a lot of our team has as well. But, but it's sort of my responsibility to always believe we can do this in a, in a, you know, rational way as well. I think for someone from John's perspective, when we had those conversations during those really difficult times, you know, I'd love to know from him what, what inspired him and encouraged him to make the decisions he made to see this through, to get to where we are today in, in less than 12 months from that point in time. and uh, I'm going to frame you know. it differently. All right. Um, so John already had a reputation. He already was known, known quantity. And your biggest fear from the conversation we had was, boy, I hope he feels challenged enough to stick the project out and those kinds of things. And that's where I want to jump off with you, John. So you come in. Your initial impression was what? Um, to me, it was, it, it was an opportunity. Think about it as a, you know, as a sandbox. We had, we had something to work with. Uh, there's a great tech team behind, uh, behind what was happening. And, um, you know, we had a little bit of, we had a little bit of revenue coming in, so that decreases our burn. Yeah. Um, so it seemed like there, we had, we had a, you know, certain amount of time to, um, to explore different opportunities. And for me, that was like a, that was that seemed like a lot of fun yeah uh, because it's like we can we can take this concept take this team and like throw it at whatever we think makes sense yeah now you know t- 12 months later we're in a place where we've tried a bunch of different things and one of the things that i, I one of the takeaways i think that was most relevant and probably that i'll point back to anytime uh i talk about the, the you know finding product market fit and, and we've all heard this but fail fast you know Right. No. Yeah. No. When. No. When. What you're looking at isn't working. Don't sit around waiting to prove it by dying. Yeah. No. What, what, like we. We tried. We pushed on doors. We. You know. We, we pushed and we poked and. Yeah. As soon as we felt a little bit of. We. We felt. You know. You'd feel a little bit of uh, friction. And you have to realize: is that friction? Is that? Is that somebody? Is that just that one person who doesn't believe? And like maybe you know, let's talk to somebody else. And and knowing when it's like okay, that doesn't work. All well, right. and also keeping people in their proper proportion, right? Like that's mm-hmm. just one person. Yep. Right. They are, yep. they may be just 1% of the market. And exactly. I just may have gotten unlucky enough to ask that it's, 1% that says, absolutely not. Yep. Should I really change my, my core space? It's that? knowing, it's knowing when an opinion of one is just an opinion of one or, or when, you, you know, when you're really facing something that isn't going, that we just don't have, you know, we just don't have the skills or the tools or the, or it's just not a good market for us. So you know? Vivek says, okay, you should ask John about getting through this period. Mm. I don't 100% want to jump there yet. And here's why. Because I see you a little bit as fresh blood at that point, right? Mm -hmm. You come into a team that's a little tired, right? You come into a team that's been working long hours because that's the grind, right? You know, like trying to court investors at the same time as you're trying to court customers and you're trying to develop the next version of the product and we got to get a pitch ready and the, you know you've, you've still got to have some type of home life or some type of personal life right eventually you got to go put gas in the car and get your hair cut like there's life stuff too so the first thing i want to start with was did you feel the difference in energy you come in it's like you hadn't been grinding 18 hours a day mm-hmm. and you come in i'm wondering if it isn't a sense of like sometimes a team like this doesn't just need a shot in the arm from somebody who mm. can carry a little bit more than everybody else for a minute. Yeah, I mean, I, I would say I can't. I can't really say if I if I was a shot in the arm. I mean, I think to their credit, you know, Vivek and Dipendra, who's the, who's our other co-founder, uh, are very positive, and very upbeat people, yeah. um, and have a lot of energy. So I didn't notice. I didn't feel like I was necessarily coming in and, and changing the game or, or you know bringing bringing new energy in um, fresh optimism maybe maybe fre- may, yeah maybe fresh optimism i do obviously i knew it was like a, a fresh set of eyes yeah um i don't know if it i didn't really perceive it as as en- much needed you know energy at that moment though. i ask all these questions and we'll move on from this i'm just i think you guys are a really interesting case for people who don't know 
where to go from where they are, right? Mm-hmm. You survived a pretty tough desert. I didn't even realize the thing about the, the, the struggles you had, Vivek. I didn't realize what you had said until you just said it. So that makes the question even more interesting. Like all I knew that you guys had addressed was a growth rate that was slower than you wanted it to be. And now I'm finding out that, you know, you actually are a great case study for somebody who's not sure where to go from where they are. And there's a mental health to it. There's a mental pacing yourself to it. There's a, you know, don't push all your chips into one customer set just because you're sure that that's where it is. Continue to probe and, mm-hmm. you know, and, and, and test. Right. But let's, let's move on. Um, so Let the- me, I just want to say too, I mean, it, it, a lot of, a lot of that energy can't comes from people who we, we would interact with such as you, right. When we, we you would, it, it was so helpful to be able to bounce ideas off you and, and, and people in the community, um, when we, who would sit down and be like, all right, here's what we're seeing. What do you think about this? And your, you know, in your opinion, where else can we go? And, um, having those connections, being able to explore them and get honest opinions and honest feedback all the time, um, was what kind of kept us going too. Well, I'm, um, I'm, I'm glad that was useful to you. Mm-hmm. But like I said, the, the guy who's listening to this right now, who is the old version of you and the old version of you, right. Mm-hmm. Or some version thereof, right. They're sitting there going like, it can't work, right. Needs to hear that it can Mm-hmm. And, and that's one of the reasons why I wanted to spend a few minutes with both of you, right, on, on this. Now, let's talk about what it, what the product is now. John, I'm putting you on the spot. Hmm. Pitch me on the new version of Click It. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I didn't know I was going to have to pitch today. Okay, so Click It is, Click it is a, a, a communication platform that gives organizations an opportunity to gather feedback and connect with their frontline workers in a way that allows them to uh, decrease turnover, in, increase their uh, employee retention, uh, especially for that avoidable turnover. So think about a place like a warehouse, a distribution center, uh, a factory. Right now, those are the environments we're focusing on. But these are places where you have 60, 70, 100% turnover. So every year they're, they're replacing a, a workforce equal to the number of workers they have. Yeah. Um, we allow them to understand what's affecting those workers that want to be there but are leaving because there's some environmental or um, or systemic issue that can be resolved if they just would understand what it is. Okay. Um, How do you do, Vivek? How do you do, CEO? <laughs> he, he does very well. He does very well. He's very good at this. <laughs> You've got to have a different pitch for, obviously, this audience when you speak with customers, when you speak with investors. So, uh, you know, my way of describing it's always going to be a little bit different than John's way. And, and I think John does it well with, with dealing with our customers. Obviously, when I, when I do it, it's very high level. You know, we're enterprise SaaS, talent retention for very high turnover environments. Yeah. Primary, you know, market is warehouses, but it also includes fast food, retail. Yeah, you're pitching and, investors. I can well, hear it. And it totally. sounds really sharp the way you do it because you've got those little punchy, you know, those, those phrases that they're listening for and that prove that you've actually like categorized yourself so they don't have to do it. Yeah. So I don't invest in enterprise SaaS. I'm out. Right. No, no, no. That's what people want to know so that you don't make them listen for 20 minutes. Right. Okay. So yeah, Mm -hmm. the the pitch was intended for the the business client that would hire you. Mm -hmm. And here's what I heard. I I mean, I spend a lot of time, I spend a lot of time talking more just to people who have no idea what we do. They're in the tech space or they're in startup land or whatever. Um, when I talk to somebody at an organization, they usually it's they already know they already know like what their problem is. They already know what we're going to do. They they usually want to know. I mean, obviously, we want to sell them on the pain point right. and bring that up again. Mm-hmm. But they're already sold. Like they they they're ready to. They just want to know how. So when I'm talking to somebody at a business, I might just go into the methodology behind it uh, a little bit more quickly. Right. So. Right now, if I want to interact with a Clickit device or a Clickit survey or a Clickit, tell me, mm-hmm. take me through it. How does it work? So maybe maybe the best way to describe it will kind of be go back to the genesis of this idea and where we came from. Yeah. Um, in, the, in the hospitality space, what we do really well is we gather feedback on a real-time basis using that by asking just one or two questions. And, and we allow hotel managers and owners to respond to their guests and, while they're still on site. And also we aggregate that information and get it to them in a very simple and easy way that's not obtrusive or, you know, for the, for the guests. So we get much more feedback and we do it in a way that's, that's actionable and, and it's easy to respond to. Yeah. Um, if you take that idea and you look at what's happening in the HR space, which we realized a little bit further down the road, which is a movement away from surveys. So rather than doing a 30, 50, 60 question survey once or twice a year, 
Um, which because, are the worst, which are the worst because, because now you've got somebody exhausted halfway through. Uh-huh. And when people, when you sit down and take a survey, your brain goes in survey mode and you start thinking, how, do, how should I answer this question? Not right. like, not, what do I think? Not what was I thinking last Friday or, you know, what was really ticking me off, um, you know, last week and, uh, you know, I'm happy now. So whatever, here's, here's your, here's your answer. Right. Um, so what we do is, um, you know, there's this movement in HR space away from, those annual surveys and towards a pulse survey, which is similar to actually what we do in the hospitality space, which right. is every now and then, what do you think about this? You know, and, and you collect and you benchmark over time and um, it's much more valuable that way. You don't have just like a dump of information once a year that HR has to sort through and figure out what to do about. Yeah. Um, so there's that, there's that trend. And also what we did, which is make it very just super easy for people. Um, so, so put it in their normal course the course of their normal day um, rather than saying okay you got to sit down and take it you know take time out and answer a survey for an hour it's just like oh i'm going to the bathroom it's easy to to respond to this question so i might as well do it and also that's um, that's been on my mind right um so there's that that's really um that's kind of the genesis and that's where that's where this whole thing came that's why from. it makes sense is because you didn't move so far off of your original right. base and, like you had this built for the most mm-hmm. part and you just back to the, we had the tool and we saw a different purpose for it, which then, Mm -hmm. you know, yielded higher growth than the old story you were trying to tell, which is hospitality, which I still like audience of one. I loved it. I absolutely 100% loved it. Right. It's the numbers don't lie. It still makes a lot of sense actually, but, but not for a huge market, because if you think about it, what is it? 50 or 60% of the, of the hotel hospitality industry is owned by two companies or three companies. Right. So, yeah. so if you think about that, it's like, and, and by the way, you know, the IHGs and the Marriotts of the world don't need to, you know, they, they don't usually have issues in their, in the room where the, you know, the faucet isn't working or the, or, you know, somebody at the front desk is being a jerk as much. I'm becoming very aware of the need because, I mean, you're talking about every company, every industry basically that has say like a factory, an assembly line, a, uh, you know, shipping, receiving it, like, most companies when, when we were first talking about this about like moving this direction and we can we can get into that too if you want but point is we 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 were thinking okay i, I was like this, this makes a lot of sense and we were, we were talking about, but but is are things moving into more of a virtual world you know isn't isn't it more about like how many physical goods how many people go to tar- or like maybe not target but how many people go into big box retailers anymore which is when you think about distribution centers and things like that that's what comes to mind but yeah. the fact is that Every single company that has a physical product is using a, a distribution center and manufacturing somewhere, not always in the U.S., but uh, and, and they're moving it around the country. So well, here's, here's where I'm really going, mm-hmm. right? Now you've got to be able to serve these customers, right? So you've hit this point now where your concern isn't whether or not you're growing fast enough. Your concern is whether or not you can get to everybody now that the product is hot, right? You've got this thing where all of a sudden there's sizzle. How do you scale up the, those efforts now? We are a mix of on-prem plus cloud uh, okay. in, in this. And we actually see that as a Trojan horse and an advantage because of our background in hardware and Wi-Fi. Yeah. And you're exactly right. Our challenge today is not on customer acquisition. It's actually that we've signed eight customers in the last 11 months, four enterprises, two Fortune 500s. And these account values... And it's a really high-class problem to have, but it's still a problem. It is. So you're exactly right. And it's actually something we think a lot about because when you're raising capital and you're thinking about deploying that capital, the thing everyone always talks about is sales and marketing. Let's let's just scale it, scale it, scale it. Right, right. And there's a right time to scale it. Because uh, they, they think that uh, cash erases a lot of mistakes is why, right? The, like, the, oh, if you have the cash, you can fix anything. Yeah, yeah. And, and you know, most businesses, say, that are serving mid-market or SMB or even just getting their feet wet in enterprise don't have the large accounts that we actually have been fortunate enough to sign up already. Congratulations. Well, thank you. And so our problem today, or focus area, is on account expansion and customer success and ensuring we, we are able to expand these accounts and continue to show value for these large customers more than it is right now on customer acquisition. Because there's clearly a pain. Yeah. There's clearly a large market that's been overlooked for a long time. Yeah. We clearly have a solution that's so far working very well. Mm-hmm. And the best way to continue growing recurring revenue for us right now is to expand these accounts more than sign up new customers. So, well, but, you know, 
the other side of that coin, right? If, if I'm a big customer, I'm just going to make one up. I'm the XYZ company and I'm in consumer goods and I'm in a small amount of, uh, you know, like small business products, right? So I got a lot of widgets and boxes and things that need to be stuffed full of things and shipped out, et cetera, et cetera. Right. I probably have a facilities person. I probably have like an entire team, if I'm being honest, right? I have a similar situation on the IT side. I have a similar si situation on uh, like HR, right? So the argument stands that you could literally just like tell them what kinds of devices to buy for themselves and then load the software onto those devices or ship them a box full of things that you procured for them, right? And that's tempting because now it basically becomes a process management question. Like, okay, can I give you an Ikea instruction, you know, fold out that tells you how to build a click it system for your, your office? Um, I don't know if that, if that mindset is taking hold yet because you still probably want to touch it and tweak it and, and train customers in person and make sure that they're happy with it and keep using it. And that's kind of what I'm digging at. Mm -hmm. So we do visit customers now, but more for relationship building. Okay. We, we, we have customers we've just mailed our solution to, um, an instruction guide, just like you described, where they can set it up and it's essentially plug and play. You need to give it an Ikea name now. It needs to be like mm -hmm. like Hogarth or something. Like it's gotta be like, oh. Mood meters. Uh, <laughs> yeah, 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 you gotta put like, you gotta put like umlauts over top of it. Like I thought these guys were from India. Anyway. We have, we have a customer who's, who's nicknamed it the mood meter. Oh, and and all the all the employees know it's the mood meter. We got to circle back to that because yeah. I have a whole bunch of questions about that. Okay. But um, so you're shipping it out, and now, but when you're doing a visit, it's more like customer success, making sure that people are satisfied with what it is, which a lot of times means confirming that they're using it correctly, confirming that mm -hmm. they understand how to read the reports that they're getting, that they know about the dashboard, etc. Right? I'm glad to hear that because otherwise, you were going to run into that snag where it just doesn't scale. Yeah. That's and that hundred percent. I mean, when we when we think that we're thinking about this, we can get a ton of value out of existing customers, and we're happy to sit with them and learn about how the how they perceive the product. Yeah. Um. At this stage, we're still at a stage where product development and business development are almost one and the same. Right? Yeah. Um. So we we go out there, and it's more like Vivek said, it's more for relationship building. But it's good to sit there, put, you know, obviously it's great to put a name to a face, but also to sit there and, and walk them through. They've never seen a product like this. This yeah. doesn't exist. So make sure that it, it's set up in a place where we know it's going to get, you know, it's going to get people to respond to it. Um, what kind of place there. is that? It's near the, you know, near the break room, near the time clock. Sometimes okay. it's better to mount it on the wall. Sometimes it's better to have it in a podium, you know, type stand. Um, you know, there, there are different, different ways that we can implement. There's actually some places where they want one of their managers to walk around with it in their hand and like put it in different places throughout the day. So, okay. so yeah, I mean, no, you, I mean, you know, this is the kind of flexibility and, and frankly, open-mindedness yep. I'd hope for. These are the things you learn. And I was, you know, and also being there, I was walking around one, you know, walking around and one of the the managers on the floor was like, well, I see, I, I see the multiple choice, but sometimes my question or my answer isn't up there. So I came back to our, you know, tech team and said, "Hey, let's put some free text in there." Yeah. Um, so now we have a free text option. They can answer for it multiple choice and also, you know, put in a little free text. And you always like every time we run a question, there's always, you know, there's a bunch of nonsense people respond with, but there's usually a nugget or two of somebody who writes something very interesting in the free text, and you can you can take it and and run with it. So, and this this brings it home. Excellent segue, by the way. I mean, everybody needs to know we didn't plan this. Um, <laughs> Now you're into a world where reporting is daunting, right? Because there's so many different ways to play this. And I'm just going to throw a couple few things that have come up just while you've been talking that, that occurred to me, right? If I hire a new manager that starts changing the, the, the weather on the mood meter, right? And that's why I said, we'll come back to this. Cause I've been thinking about this for a few minutes now. If I hired somebody new and all of a sudden there's just a black cloud over the shop floor and, and let's be hundred percent clear. I am the, biggest advocate of management accountability that you've been in the room with for some time. I think managers generally find a way to wiggle out of accountability because they're holding all the cards, right? And the mood meter, a lot of times gets used as like, oh, well, you know, they just don't like the rules. Like the, the explanations that go with things um, are easier to manipulate groom, 
twist, right? When it's a one-time survey or a twice a year survey. But if it's a daily, weekly kind of a thing, now all of a sudden I'm watching like, okay, ever since this person came over, you know, our, our overall morale is lower or our responses to whether or not you feel like the customer or the, the uh, company supports you, you know, is down, right? Um, tell me how much that's already been explored and, and how deep you want to go into that, that whole sort of like advanced analytics, or at mm. least, you know, uh, answering questions that people wish they could get an easy answer to. Mm. Well, one thing that comes to mind actually <clears throat> is just a question we had today, which was what happens, you know, you, in, you install this and six months later, the environment's improved. You've, you've, they've learned a few things about what's going on and, and people are feeling better what prevents the customer from just wanting, just taking it out? You know, they've, they've got right, an improvement. Yeah. Like why? <laughs> they fixed and, the and, thing, and right? And I'm like scratching my head because it's like, if you, this is a competitive, this is a competitive landscape. Like they are competing for these employees and you'd think, mm -hmm. I mean, it, it makes, and that's a good, it's a good question. Yeah. But, but, you know, having experienced it and having seen it, these, these guys want to have a leg up and they, once they have that leg up, they want to know where they're, where they stand against their competitors. Right. They want to know if things are slipping. And so, yeah, you keep it in, you keep it going. And, and as far as the data, I don't know if this is like getting, going off on a kind of a rabbit trail, but let's find out as far as the data goes. I mean, once we start collecting that data, um, we can almost get into a predictive scenario where we start seeing this thing happening in this environment and we can set off some red flags for this company that's using the system. And we've because, seen this fish before. Yeah, right? exactly. Yeah. Yep. Oh boy. This looks like this looks just like what happened at XYZ company yep. a year ago when they switched to the same just in time model that you just switched to, mm -hmm. right? That would yep. be gorgeous. You got a new manager and now people are saying this and here, here's what worked for them or, you know, this dynamic, it, it makes sense. Yeah. This right? is, this has always been the nightmare of B2B disruption, right? Is the fact that everybody ends up with a different dashboard, a different username, a different password, a different login training, everything like they don't want to have eight screens. They, they don't want to get 12 update emails a day. And how do you start consolidating functions, right? At the end of the day, what I, re what I really want to do is I want to get a red light, yellow light, green light that tells me what to do next, right? Mm -hmm. And just let me do it. Don't tell me that I have to spend three hours mm -hmm. highlighting an Excel spreadsheet to figure out what to do. Just tell me, like, mood meter's down. Mm -hmm. Okay, buy everybody pizza. Like, what? <laughs> I don't know what the cheap and easy move is on that. You guys are accepting resumes for a business uh, development person, probably more than one. A customer success person, definitely just one there, and that could be filled any day. Anybody else that should definitely be taking a look at Click It, in, just in terms of broad, because I'm, we'll send them to the website for the fine details of the position, right? Mm -hmm. Like that's easy. I just want to make sure that we're telling them, telling mm -hmm. people whether or not to check the website at all, mm -hmm. right? Are there any other like rapid things, you know, things that turn over quick, things you hire a lot, things that you know. We're, we're doing something that's a big need is, is data science. Oh yeah. Um, that can't be easy. Yeah. We design like UI, um, UI, I think is a, is a big need right now. That's big everywhere if, too. You know, that's make or break stuff. Yeah. And, and all that said, you're right. We're hiring for very specific positions, but you know, the way John and I met was just a serendipitous, Hey, let me introduce you to someone as you mentioned, thought he was talented. The most beautiful man in Pittsburgh. There, there you go, officially on the record now. Uh, and even, even you know, our team in India, Ben, our intern at Penn right now, it's, you know, we, we believe if you can find talented people who are excited, motivated to want to build something, we're more than happy to speak with them. Uh, so please, hopefully they don't feel constrained by these exact roles right now. No, absolutely. All right, guys, I know that it's tough when you're growing as fast as you are to come in and do a repeat issue, like an update, you know, episode of the show, but I'm really glad you came in. Thanks for coming in. I got Vivek. I got John. Clickit.com. Thanks for coming in. Thanks for having Thanks us. Thanks for having Scott. us. All right. That's the end of the show. Thanks to John. Thanks to Vivek. Everybody over at Clickit. Q-L-I-C-K-E-T.com. If you're a candidate for one of those positions, make sure you check them out. Uh, I just like Clickit. They're a great group of people. Uh, I wish them all success. And it seems like they're having it with as fast as they're growing. Buzzy and I are going to make another episode of this fine program. We're going to get in the lab, build that up for you. Uh, I don't know. Let's do it Wednesday morning. If you subscribe, you're going to get it before everybody else. So click that button if you didn't already. The Pitchworks Podcast comes to you from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. A production of the Epicast Network and McTaggart LLC. Engineering and production by Buzzy Torek and Nick Miller. For more information, show feedback, and ad sales, visit pitchworks.com. 
B-E-I-T-C-H-W-E-R-K-S.com. On social media, find and follow the show on Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, and Instagram using that same brand name, B-I-T-C-H-W-E-R-K-S.